Welcome back to another session of Sets and Reps. I'm Dr. Michael Landrum. I'm here with Travis Erickson. Hello, Michael. Hey, Travis, how's it going? Today we got something special for you and everybody out there. We've got an interview with Dr. Herman von Werkhoven. He's an assistant professor here in Boone, North Carolina at Appalachian State University, originally from South Africa. Herman here has a little bit different background than either of us, where he actually started in, one, a different country, <laughs> but two, also, uh, he started with a whole different career path in engineering. So, Herman, would you start us off by that? Tell us a little bit about where you came from and then uh, how you got into your original field and then maybe into okay. exercise science. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so, how to get into my original field? I think, you know, when I, when I went, was in high school, um, you know, I think people kind of pushed me towards, you know, what's a good, good career to take? And I think engineering was one of the things that... Yeah. People knew that you know the jobs were, and you know probably still are. There's still a lot of jobs in engineering. Oh yeah. And um, and my my one brother I had one that went to business. He was an accountant, one an engineer, and kind of it intrigued me, and I liked the engineering there. So I went, and I um, I got my bachelor's in electrical engineering. But it it was a struggle. It wasn't that easy because I just my first few years it was it was fine, and then it just you know I kind of lost interest, and I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if that's what I wanted to do, <clears throat> but. I finished my degree and then I worked as an electrical engineer for two years and during that time I just knew that this is not what I want to do, it's just I want to work more with people. Okay. And, uh, so you know I've always loved sport and at school um, you know I, academically I did fine but I, you know, the sport just always always drew me and I kind of thought well is there a way that I can actually do something in sport and you always you know you think about well professional sports person but you never think of well can you actually go and just have a career in sport. So mm -hmm. I decided I'm not going to do the jump to just go into some, you know, um, maybe go back to school and, and study something, but I want to see if I like to work with people enough and, you know, can I do yeah. something with it. So I started considering going to teach at, at high schools. In South Africa, there's, you know, almost all, you know, if you're a male high school teacher, you coach sport. That's just how it works. I don't know if it's still it the same. that way in the U.S. <coughs> that, was, that was a real strong model. It's, it's yes. not quite... Is strong now. I think people are trying to go get away from it as well in South right. Africa. Mm -hmm. and, and even for South Africa, from elementary school age, um, sport is school based. So as a seven year old, you'll play sport, you know, school versus school, and yet it's more club based. Mm -hmm. But I think people are also moving away from that more in South Africa. Sure. But in, in any case, so, you know, I went to schools, I don't have any educational diploma or anything <laughs> or something, and I just said, well, you know, I want to I wanna teach, I think I want to work with people. And you know, I, I went to two or three schools, and and I got a job. The, the, the reason, I mean, the main reason why I think I got a job is first of all they wanted males at schools because there wasn't a lot of men to teach and to coach. You know, okay. and I said I loved, I would love to coach. Yeah. And also because you know, science teachers were also not that common. So so mm -hmm. I taught math and computer science. Oh, okay. So I did that for a, for a year and a half, and I decided okay. I love working with people. I love the coaching. So even though it was high school students, it was even though it was high school students, I wouldn't do any you know any younger than that. It was right. it was stuff that you know, I, probably the one of the most stressful days, but the most exhilarating day of my life was my first day as a high school teacher because I've never done this before. Yeah. Right. And now I'm in front of these kids and they look up to me and you know, okay, what are we going to do and how do we do it? It was it was extremely exciting. But then I you know I'll still. You know, going back to engineering versus going back to being a high school teacher, and mm -hmm. a lot of people would say, you know, engineering is more the high profile, probably financially better job. Right. But I would go back to the school 10 times over going back to engineering. I just, the, the people interaction was so exciting to me. Let, well, me, let me ask this because I, I'm trying to visualize this situation. <laughs> so, so you're saying that at that time in South Africa, and it, we're not talking about a ex excessively long time ago, you're a young man, of course, and... and <laughs> Um, so you're saying that essentially all the teachers, the high school teachers, no matter what they taught, were also coaches at that time? Yeah, I, you know, I would say unless it's some of the older and probably older only female teachers, like uh -huh. when they got into their 50s, they were at a point, well, I'm not coaching anything more. Okay. But I was, you know, I got in there, okay, I'm, I'm going to coach, so rugby and cricket, I've loved playing rugby and cricket my whole life. Mm -hmm. I was very excited. I coached rugby and cricket. I love, you know, I did track and field. They asked me, well... What, you know, what have you done? And I said, well, I did sprints, I did uh, high jump, long jump, and they said, okay, we need somebody for long jump. My first year, that's, I'm the long jump coach. The next year, <laughs> they hired an, another teacher, and he was actually, um, 
he was a really good long jump coach. So they told us, tell me, really, this guy's really good. We need somebody in discus. So <laughs> I go, you know, right. I'm a skinny guy. I've never done discus my whole life. Or kind of, I probably did a little bit in school just for fun. But mm-hmm. So now I'm this discus coach. And, you know, the students look up to you and like, okay, well, yeah. how do we do the discus? Right. And I have, you know, pick up that thing. and like, oh, I haven't done this in a long time. We know exactly what is good and bad mechanics. And that's, oh that's You're lucky. There's only one step below being a throws coach, and that's... At the high school level, if they just say you're just going to go coach the pole vault, that means we don't care at all about you at that point. So if you you get relegated from jumps down to throws, and I guess some people would argue that, but me being a jumper, I would put throw, I would put jumps certainly above the throws. But I think we can all agree that everyone below that would be the the vault coach. And that's, that's ironic because I mean pole vault is probably the most difficult. It is, but no yeah. one cares. <laughs> Whatever, go do it. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. That's that's basically the the extent of the coaching. It was it was fun. I you know again I enjoyed it, and I just realized well. You know, how I get the athletes to perform, I'm so excited in it, I mm-hmm. didn't, you know, I didn't care enough if they could do the math or the computer science, <laughs> but it was about how do I get my kicker to kick better in the rugby game, and so I kind of got into, you know, I want to go into a sports field, and at that point in time, you know, I thought sports psychology would be a good way to go, I just found it very interesting how yeah. we get people to perform well, so I... Um, Went to a bachelor's, did another bachelor's. So I think in South Africa it's also uncommon to go from um, a bachelor's in one field straight to a master's in something else. Mm-hmm. They feel like you have to really start sure, fresh. So it was. So I went and did a bachelor's, and that was tough, you know, to go from engineering to a teacher to, okay, now I'm just a student, student. again. Now let me ask you a question. Do you have the same kind of liberal arts education that you see at a lot of American universities where you have these classes in history or political science or otherwise that you would need to take <coughs> when you went back for your bachelor's or were you able to just go right into? In, in South Africa, mostly it's go right into it. Okay. So, you know, I, kinda, I took, okay. from the first year, I kind of took courses in psychology. I took, so basically my courses were a combination of psychology, um, and really human movement science, so, okay. but we, you know, in our health and exercise science. So it will be, you know, anatomy, mm-hmm. you know, taking anatomy, like in a 200 level course, I think my biomechanics was a 200 level so course. what was the degree program specifically? It was actually a bachelor's in social sciences with an emphasis in sports psychology. Okay. So I was really in, I was really part of the psychology or social sciences yeah. where psychology was, was aligned, but all your electives you could take with human movement science and I took all my electives there, and I, I love doing it and you know we had to take like in your first first year you had to take gymnastics and swimming mm-hmm. you had to do that and your second year you have to do gymnastics and swimming and you know, gymnastics yeah, you, had, you and four three four other guys had to do these maneuvers right and, <laughs> and you know this is just it was tough for me to kind of these guys were much younger than I was but it was it was a lot of fun so I made a lot of good friends there and but as I did that you know I took biomechanics and exercise physiology, and really all the courses was fascinating to mm-hmm. me. I, you know, I really loved doing it, and then I thought, well, you know, my engineering background kind of aligns well with biomechanics. It feels like I can work with people, I'm interested in working with people, but I actually like the science part of it more maybe so than, I still enjoy sports psychology, but I think the biomechanics would be a good match for me, and kind of that's why I got into biomechanics, and then... Um, then I realized, you know, I need to go further. And yeah. at that point in time, I met my wife in South Africa, who's from the U.S., and then we decided to come here, and I went to do my master's mm-hmm. in biomechanics, and then later my Ph.D. in biomechanics. So it was an interesting road, but, you know, I'm really excited. And I, and I still think of myself, you know, the fact that I enjoyed sports psychology, I think of myself as an exercise or sports scientist. Mm-hmm. I happen to know a little bit more about biomechanics than other fields, but, right. you know, I'm really right. interested in the psychology of people performing well or the psychology of injury or the physiology and I think do you I think that came from your coaching I mean because I, I feel the same <laughs> way because coaching at the high school and collegiate mm-hmm. level I, I realized pretty quickly that it, it it was largely about the the physique of the athlete yeah. but a lot of it was what was going on, on upstairs especially yeah. for sports like track and field where it's mm-hmm. very objective you know exactly how you perform yeah. whether you threw farther than you did before or whatever I suppose it'd be the same for team sports too, and trying to get team dynamics to work together and yeah. such. But do you think it was from your coaching background that you really felt drawn to sports psychology? Um, I think so. You know, I think also I'm a jack of all trades more than you know. Kind of, I've I've hopped around, and you know, you know, honestly, I have no idea five years from now if I still, you know, still this is exactly what I want to do and stuff. Right. At the moment, I'm really excited and I'm happy that I'm doing doing what I'm doing now. But I think in general, I just 
I'm interested in a lot of stuff. And, you know, the fact that I love sport and, you know, therefore I'm interested in everything surrounding sport, uh, I think is a main thing that I just, I like the, all the different aspects of it. But the sports psychology, like, you know, as I was coaching there, I remember some, like we had an amazing long jumper that was always, you know, he was almost at the point of tears before, he was this guy, 16 years old, and he, and when he ran, he always, like, you can see he was just, his neck muscles were just, he was, was he so... nervous? He was extremely nervous. He was so nervous, and but he was amazing. Yeah. And I, you know, I always wondered that about stuff, you know, is is that what makes him so good? That Or is it just yeah. like, if he was actually able to relax, he will be so much better doing it. And you had, and you know, you have these, I mean, you have like team talks, you have these guys right. that you need to kind of, okay, we're going to do this today. <laughs> and the other guys, well, you really don't want to talk to him at all. He wants to kind of, joke around and then you know as a coach you know because and you know again you know in the school type of scenario you know you're this coach and like you're a mean guy a lot of times especially right. in South Africa it's very conservative and <laughs> and uh, and then you have these guys that just want to joke around and you get so upset in the beginning and then you realize well that's actually if you were to kind of get their stress levels up they will not perform right. well at all right. Right. and it's just like you know it's definitely some of those stuff made me just you know, interested in you know how do you actually do this well? Yeah, we we, we just talked about this. Yeah, the inverted U theory. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A I actually serendipitous. you guys told me you know said that you know you might want to be on there. I went to the she he, he showed me what it was and huh? actually that's the one I just listened to a little oh, bit okay. of the inverted U theory <laughs> and then I had to do something else. But yeah, but I remember like when you said the inverted U theory. And, you know, it was about psychology. I remember, you know, st- having studied sports sure. psychology, yep. that that was discussed a lot. The the used, you know, the perfect stress levels. And yeah, exactly. so that's a very interesting thing. I think that we've already talked about. But we see a lot not only in our students, but then <coughs> whoever we're working with, maybe athletes or students who are trying to train their athletes. Yeah, I just love to know about that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Right. So, Herman, can you tell us? You've kind of mentioned. You obviously went to undergraduate at twice and, and you had <laughs> where did you go where where were these schools at? so both of them were the University of Pretoria in South Africa so that's one of the I think we have about five or six really good universities in South Africa and it's you know it's actually it's very different in the US that you know you're fortunate to go to the university I think in South Africa it's like well please go and get a high school degree and then if you're fortunate you can go to college and yeah in the US it's you know everybody should go to college I right. think it's a, it's a very right. different system and but the University of Pretoria was the closest one to home. It wasn't, you know, it was just like this financially makes the most sense. And that's where I went and it was a good school. And I, I went there for my engineering degree and I kind of worked around that. I actually, you know, worked in a diamond mine as an engineer. That's another <laughs> interesting story. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, then I, the, the job I got was at this university in, in Pretoria, which is the capital of South Africa. And then I just went back uh, at that same university to get my bachelor's degree. So then... I came to the U.S. and I did my master's at Penn State, um, and I taught as a lecturer at Arizona State for two years, and then I went back to Penn State to do my Ph.D. Okay. How did you get hooked up at Penn State? Um, Penn State, was, it was a question of re- decent program and financially it was is the best. And you know, I think okay. a lot of it, that, that's how it comes down to things, because you know what, my wife and I, so I told her I want to go to uh, do um, graduate go to graduate school and she she had a master's um, at that point she's a civil or water resource engineer mm-hmm. and then we started looking well she said well she might be interested in doing a PhD let's just go and do this together in the okay. US and then we looked at programs and we kind of identified four or five programs that had decent programs for both of us I got okay. right. so UT Austin I think was one and Arizona State was a potential and Penn State and then just funding wise like TA positions and mm-hmm. so she got a really good fellowship at Penn State and mm-hmm. you know I knew it was a decent program and I also ended up there you know I was interested in biomechanics and sports biomechanics <coughs> but the only person that would because you have to kind of identify with the mentor there and there was a, other people didn't have spots and I didn't you know the one person that would take me was a motor control person okay which I worked with her for a year and it just didn't work out well I was more interested in biomechanics right. and then my, my my then master's basic advisor took me on and you know okay. so that it, it started off not being that good but I think you know it turned out really well yeah but you know basically I didn't know anything about Penn State n- mm-hmm. none at all you know okay. it was like didn't know football was big I, <laughs> I figured that out very quickly it, yeah. was, it was awesome it's an awesome experience but uh, so you know that's just why we went because it was decent programs and at that point I didn't really look as much as the rank and rank is that much it's just are there any people that so I was interested in sports biomechanics, mm-hmm. and although there were people that did it, 
technically not a lot of them do it anymore. Um, mm. But, you know, so we, that's how we ended up at Penn State. So, Herbert, could you expand a little bit on your experiences at Penn and how that directed your research back then and currently, and then go on to talk about how you think that it's going to be changing in the future, not just in your field of biomechanics, but if you can even expand further into exercise science more generally. Okay, That's a pretty so, big question. So, <laughs> no, you might have to mind me at some point. <laughs> yeah. but, so I think, you know, so when, again, when I got there, I was in this motor control um, lab, which I didn't enjoy that much. You know, I like, I think motor control and biomechanics is a really good link to mm -hmm. and how the yep. human body works and functions. But I wanted to biomechanics, and I actually really was interested in sports biomechanics and s performance biomechanics. But I realized very soon that, you know, it's very difficult People don't really do that as much as Penn State. I mean, there are people that their background was a lot in sports biomechanics. And I think a lot of it has to do with funding and at a big university right. like that, yeah. funding, you do not get a lot of funding with anything in, in sports performance related things. And, you know, maybe some people are lucky to do it. But mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of I wanted to do it. And, and then just my, I, I was a teaching assistant for biomechanics and the then department at uh, Phil Martin who became my advisor and I told him I'm not really happy in the motor control and then he had an opportunity there was this engineer that came to him that had this bicycle design which is like sort of an actual circular pedaling he had these levers that you push on and he okay. was he was this retired engineer and he was so excited about this design and he told me well we can you, for it as a project the master's project you can we can analyze this uh -huh. design and that's how I really got into you know, I was interested in sports biomechanics, and that was kind of the closest thing that I could right. have. <laughs> it had some performance, performance aspect. It had some performance right. aspect. So it was this really funny design, and we decided not to build something, but, you know, because of I had some engineering background, and I took some courses in computational modeling, so mm -hmm. create a computer model of something that can, you know, look at a lever bicycle system versus a circular pedaling system and see which one, you know, if, you know, which one... We had a, we, we kind of modeled a person with joints and you know which one you had okay. to create the, the largest moments or the to, oh, to, okay. to cycle at a certain power output. I got you. So that was basically my master's thesis. Did it work? <clears throat> it the system did not or was not as good as circular. Okay. And then you know after the fact it kind of seems like it makes sense because the thing is if you have this lever system, yep. something needs to stop this lever at the bottom and right. get the other one up and stop. So. If you can make the levers long and basically create more torque because you're yep. increasing this moment arm. Yep. But the problem is, you know, you have to stop and start, stop and start. And stop and start means accelerations. Mm -hmm. And some something has to, you know, instead of acceleration, there's forces. Yep. Something has to create those forces and your legs have to create it. So basically there was, the, the power output was not as smooth. So in cycling, people talk about, you know, like and there's a fluctuation in power output, mm -hmm. but this is, was extreme fluctuation yeah, in power sure. output. Yeah, sure. So it really oscillate back Yes, yeah, so I think, you know, it... But there are actually there's a company that sells it as a it's a that sells it for people with some neurological injuries that okay. cannot actually cycle so they stand on it and then they just push their legs up and down and okay. then they can move with that so there are some potential applications for a system like that but mm -hmm. from a performance perspective we didn't think there was anything so you know that was my masters and then again I was stuck on sports biomechanics and you know there wasn't really anybody at that point that. I could work with, I actually had an opportunity to go and do my PhD potentially in Australia looking at cricket because, you know, I was yeah. really into the sport. But it was kind of, I don't know, it was like a, more of a pipe dream. My wife was mm -hmm. pregnant at the stage and we like thinking, I'm going to move to Australia right. now. It's, she, you know, she wasn't too thrilled about that. And I, <laughs> I, you know, I would love the idea of doing sports research. But I just decided, okay, let's just, let's just stop for a while. And I got an opportunity to... Um, to, as a, to do, become a lecturer at Arizona State so I thought well I'm just going to do this we'll see what happens and then as I was a lecturer you know, I felt like I wanted to do research I was excited about it and the opportunities were not there to do it necessarily so you know I wanted to do a PhD again and then you know it was tough because I almost at that point I thought well I don't know how if I will be able to do sports biomechanics I you know it's not that's the only thing I'm interested in I am interested in biomechanics in general but you know, the sports biomechanics mm -hmm. was still my interest and then I decided, well, I'm going to do this PhD. Um, and somehow I, I was going to stay at Arizona State, but there was some concerns with the program being disestablished right. due to the whole financial yep. concerns. In, I, I don't know when that was, like about 2008 or something yep. Yep. around there. So I 
you know, looked for other opportunities and I got this opportunity to work with my PhD advisor, Steve Piazza, who, uh, he was on my committee for my master's. Mm -hmm. So I knew kind of what he did. He looked at muscle and tendon, um, I guess, function and how your, you know, foot and ankle morphology or the length of your toes or the length of your heels or things like that can actually affect how your muscles perform. Okay. So that interested me and, you know, he gave me those opportunities, so I went back to do my PhD. So again, it was more of a, it wasn't necessarily sports biomechanics per se, but mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the, you know, how the muscle function and the yeah. musculoskeletal system. And that has really kind of shaped my research at the moment. Okay. But I'm still, you know, I'm still a, I think I'm not going to call myself a closet sports biomechanist because <laughs> I'm out there, I'm saying it. <laughs> uh, and I think, you know, at some a place, you know, which is unfortunate, at some, at some bigger universities where it's all about grant writing, you really don't say you're a sports by my kid. Yeah, right. Some people would frown upon it, which is oh, kind of yeah. sad. And, you know, I think it's not necessarily a global thing. I think some other no. countries, it's still sports performance is a big thing. Right. But in the U.S., you know, at Research One universities, it's not necessarily something that will yeah. be seen in a good light necessarily. I know I've seen many other countries <coughs> around where you mentioned Australia. I know mm. that they're very uh, right. supportive of athletic research, but yeah. I know now in Brazil I've heard that they're, as they get ready for Rio and yeah. all oh, really? that, they're just throwing money at the World Cup previous to that. Is that I've right? heard they've really outfitted a lot of really great exercise science labs to look at specifically yeah. more sports science right. approaches, right. more sport biomechanics right. and all of that as they get ready for these different events that they're hosting. Yeah, and I, you know, I do think that, you know, and my goal, I guess, is, you know, going into this, that I know I'm interested in, you know, muscle functioning and stuff, but I also have this sports performance, mm -hmm. and, I, and I hopefully will be able to, you know, as I, you know, start my career here at App State, to, to basically have both of those components, to have a basic research component and a more applied research component. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know exactly how that will bear out yet, but I think, yeah. you know, this is... Um, you know, this is how I would want to do this. And we'll see, you know, depending on how much pressure there is on funding and, you know, who I can work with, are there any, yeah. you know, depending on, you know, how you can work with coaches and stuff. And and so I think there's a lot of things that, you know, I need to kind of learn, you know, you know people for, of, you know, like, you know, you guys that have been here and know how to work with coaches or not work with coaches and yeah. what, you know. Sure. Well, even in the grant writing process, I know specifically doing cardiovascular or neurological, nobody's <coughs> going to pay you to make people run faster, jump higher. Outside, yeah. maybe NASA will throw a couple thousand your way every few years. But uh, you got to have that clinical approach to it. Yeah. How can you help some sort of you know, pathology or whatever it is yeah. specifically? So that's why I think you do see so many biomechanists going yeah. more towards either a walking problems, spinal injuries. And, you know, make, you know, also make no mistake, I... I know that what I'm interested in sports by mechanics is not really important in the great mm -hmm. scheme of life. You know, maybe you can learn certain things from sports by mechanics that you can get to the general population. So I know that, you know, general population biomechanics are obviously, you know, how to get people to train if they're injured or, you know, how do you have somebody that can't walk, how do you help them yeah. to walk using some biomechanical tools. So I, you know, I understand that, but, you know, so, and that's why I think I want this combination. Right. But, you know, I'm interested in, you know, like all of us watch, you know, sport. So, you know, yeah. we're interested in it and we're excited to have people perform better. And that's always been something that I've been excited in. So, you know, kind of, and, you know, maybe even, you know, almost in a sense, like even in your professional career, you can, you can kind of have your, okay, this is what I like to do, but I know that these things are important. So mm -hmm. how do I shape my teaching and my research to have some component of yeah. just almost, you know, like people, you know, like, volunteer work or charity work or something you could almost see it in a similar fashion that even though you do this doesn't mean that you're you should always keep in mind of what the more general problems are I think well it's you know it's a tricky situation right because I think on some level <coughs> any research that just helps our, our understanding of a topic is valuable mm -hmm. right even though that value may not directly relate to saving human lives, yes. or, but it's still contributing to a body of knowledge that we and have. Still, about and I think with this, you know, we looked at this muscle, this muscle tendon structure and things. So we, you know, for the research of my PhD, you know, I helped with a study looked at sprinters versus non-sprinters and how their heel lengths are different. For example, well, you know, my advice and my PhD advisor is not really interested in sports performance, but he's just learning and we're understanding how the right. ankle joint functions. And at old age, you know, what does this mean? The fact that people that are structured differently as mobility problems or not. And if you know that, you know, let's say, if you can measure somebody's heel length and know they would have mobility problems, can you then, for those people, 
increase their muscle strength. So it's more important for them to do strength right. and conditioning. Right. So it's definitely, you're, you're right, there's definitely there's some knowledge we're gaining from whatever we do, and hopefully we just need to be, you know, think of how you can apply it to the just general topics. All right, Herman, we come to what I hope will become my favorite part of any of these interviews that we have, our origins and descriptions <coughs> interviews that we're going to have. And, and this is our speed round, and so I'm just going to give you a couple of, I've got 10 questions for you, and each of them are going to be an option, uh, either or kind of a thing. And so, and I've tried to, to uh, pick questions that would pertain to your interests uh, to some degree. And so the first question is, is very simply, kinetics or kinematics? <laughs> kinematics. Rugby or cricket? Oh, wow. That's tough, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rugby. Beef or chicken? Beef. <laughs> Always. Angular or linear? <laughs> <laughs> linear. Steve Biko or Nelson Mandela? Uh, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Good one. Robin or Snyder? Robin or Snyder? Wow, that's also a good one. <laughs> uh, Robin. You, you may need to... I, I don't think most people will know what that refers to. <laughs> I I, you had me for a second there, but it's like Dutch football players. That's right, <laughs> yep. Penn State football or Penn State women's volleyball? Wow. That's, that's a, a good, good one, one, too. I'll go with football. <laughs> Qualitative or quantitative? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I was an engineer, so I'll say quantitative. <laughs> American College of Sports Medicine or National Strength and Conditioning Association? Hmm. I see the same American College of Sports Medicine. And the last question, this is not, this is a, not an either-or question. This is, what does exercise science mean to you? <laughs> uh, what does it mean to me? I think it, you know, I think it used to mean you know, sports performance and injury prevention. And I think... And around the world, it's become more of well, you know, everybody needs to exercise, and exercise is medicine. So I think I'm I'm a lo- I have a lot of interest in sports performance and injury prevention, but I think there's a responsibility on everybody in exercise science to make you know we can use this field to make people healthier and hopefully you know get them to get old healthy and and live a happy life. So I think it is just you know it's there's a lot of different aspects to it, but it's in general just. You know, exercise is good for you. Exercise keeps you healthy, and you should try and kind of get the word out there. But also, you know, you still can have your interest in performance analysis or whatever your topic is. Gotcha. Yeah, not everybody's going to be a professional athlete when they go out there. I know I run into that a lot for Olympic weightlifting. They're like, well, I'm not trying to go to the Olympics. It's like, well, you just try, and we'll see how close you get. And then we'll worry right. about it. Oh, I accidentally it. went to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, shoot, because that happens all the time. Just like everybody in the weight room, like, oh, I don't want to get too bulky. But, yeah, that's everybody else's problem, too. We are taking days off so that way we don't gain muscle any faster. But, yeah, I think that that's true. We do try to emphasize health and all that, injury care and prevention and all, but it's expand way beyond that. That, not only into sport, but then also into basic science, and who knows, wherever else we can end up getting ourselves into, because it is such a broad field. All right, well, I think that's all we have time for today. Herman, I want to thank you again for coming in here. I think it was a great interview and a really good way to kick off this Origins of I agree, it was great. Thanks very much, Herman. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. It was fun. All right, we'll see you all next time.